Previews of the new heavens and new earth followed Jesus around. After going international, Jesus comes back across the lake, the Sea of Galilee, to a Jewish coastal town. Upon arrival, Jesus and his disciples are swept into a flurry of needs. There's a healing narrative within a healing narrative. Jesus responds to a synagogue leader, one of the religious elite, who is humble and desperate enough to ask Jesus to heal his sick daughter. On his way, he is delayed by a woman with a chronic bleeding issue who is healed only by touching Jesus' robe. Jesus celebrates her faith and restoration, then resumes pressing toward the sick girl, who by the time Jesus arrives, is dead. The funeral procession has already begun, the ritual grieving is in progress, and Jesus interrupts the tears. In the lingua franca, Aramaic, he invites the girl to rise. She does. In the Jewish thought world, partly shaped by books like Leviticus, both of these ladies should have been avoided. Ritual purity was a big deal. You couldn't approach God without first becoming ritually pure. That didn't mean that being impure was necessarily sinful. It was just a way of honoring the holiness of God by keeping purity laws. As Tim Mackey puts it, ritual purity is a state where you separate yourself from anything related to death. In Leviticus, there are all kinds of things that Israelites associated with life and death. Normally, if you touch something impure, it transfers its impurity to you. Blood was one of those things, and of course, a dead body was too. But something remarkable happens around Jesus. These women who are touching death are restored to life. As Tim Mackey observes, he went around touching people who are impure, people with skin diseases, a woman with chronic bleeding, or dead people, and when he touches them, their impurity should transfer over to Jesus, but instead, Jesus' purity transfers to them and actually heals their body. Rather than contaminating Jesus with death, Jesus contaminates them with life. These stories are previews of the new heavens and new earth, a glimpse at what we know as the resurrection. For those who believe in and follow Jesus, his purity undoes the death in us, restoring us to new life. And this work will be fully realized one day. Not even death can separate us from God's love. This resurrection hope is the aim of the gospel narrative, the destination of this Exodus journey. As another disciple we haven't heard from later recorded Jesus saying, whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. We need John's jotting to help complete the picture here. You see, when the living Jesus takes residence in our hearts, we too participate in the bringing of life, the advancing of God's new heavens and new earth in the world around us. As Jesus invited even the dead, would you rise? The new Exodus leads to new life. Thank you.